Welcome to another episode of A Moment of Tiki coming to you from a rather wet afternoon in the Lagoon of Mystery. I've never done a rum review before or tasting here on A Moment of Tiki. That's because I don't feel I have a developed enough palate uh, to effectively uh, uh, evaluate and discuss uh, most spirits. Um, I'm pretty good mixing them in cocktails and picking out the individual components in the cocktails and figuring out what works and what doesn't. But as for the individual spirit, spirit spirits, not quite that confident, but I'm going to make an exception today because I've gotten this. It is Clarine Babau, which is um, a very interesting expression. Uh, it comes from Haiti. It is a product of the Arawaks distillery. And lest you think that this is a big commercial bottling, it is not. Um, I love the artwork on here done by uh, Haitian artists. The Arawaks distillery is a uh, very small, um, very of the people. It is uh, micro. Micro would be probably a good description of it. Um, is by Western standards, it'd be primitive, but that is why Clarin is so exciting in the rum world now and become the uh, spirit du jour, so to speak. Um, Clarins are often described as Haitian moonshine. Um, that's because they don't have sophisticated industrial capabilities and, and uh, the quality control that ensures every bottle tastes exactly like every other bottle, every distillery run, every year, every season. Um, there is a lot of terroir expressed here. The sugarcane juice, when it is fermented, has a very long fermentation. Uh, usually these are open fermentations with wild yeasts. That means you have the environment surrounding them contributing very much to the flavors, the esters, the, the cogeners that come through in this. Um, in Jamaica, they would call it hogo. Um, I don't know what they call it in Haiti, what the French equivalent would be. But the end result is that every one of these small micro distilleries produces a product that is entirely different from every other product produced around the country and around the world because Clarine is very uh, much unique to Haiti. So this is bottled at 48.7% alcohol by volume. And I will admit that I have tasted this several times before, and each time it's been a different experience. So I'm pouring a little bit into my snifter because I'm classy and stuff that way. And it's got a definite viscous quality to it. It has long legs. It hangs on to the side of the glass. And yes, this is what I remember. It's got a very thick, buttery nose to it, along with overripe strawberries. This is not something that I was expecting from a rum, no matter how rustic, but sniff a little more. And the strawberries kind of vanish. There's a little bit of briny salinity here. You can smell some of the alcohol, but it's not uh, necessarily hot on the nose. Whoa. It's definitely hot on the palate. Um, first thing I'm hit with is um, it's thick, but then there's an astringency and uh, uh, olive brininess. Um, all traces of strawberries are gone. There's um, some shoe leather, especially in a back, back palette. Peppercorns, sweet pickles. A 
Okay, the strawberries are back. It says, really an unusual Jekyll and Hyde spirit because the flavor almost changes from sip to sip. It's very electric. Um, my tongue is tingling. If I, if, if I had to pick one term to describe the entirety of the experience in this, it would be, um, t it tastes like licking a nine volt battery. It's very, I hate to use very because very is not a very good word to use for descriptions, but this is a powerful, interesting, um, um, dramatic flavor that when you're thinking of rums, be they uh, agricoles or column still light white rums or dark, funky, hogo laden Jamaican rums, this doesn't fit into any of those categories. It tastes quite different. And that's fascinating. I still, I still got that electric tingle going on my tongue. Um, I'm, I'm kind of in love with this. This a little bit goes a long way. <clears throat> but oh my goodness, it's such a distinctive and uh, singular product. I, I have not had many Clarins, but I would wager to say uh, there is very little chance of mistaking this particular bottling uh, for anything else. This is Clarin Vaval. But as I said before, I'm not a neat spirits drinker. Uh, I, I prefer my spirits in cocktails. And so there is one cocktail that I have enjoyed in the past that I really wanted to try this in to take it through this paces, okay? It's called the Peychon Cocktail. Uh, I got it out of Beach Bum Berry's uh, books. And the Peychon Cocktail, pardon my French because I don't speak it, and so I'm probably mangling the pronunciation. It's named after Alexandre Peychon, the first president of Haiti. So, in Beach Bumberry's books, uh, it calls for three quarter ounces of barbancourt, and then three quarter ounces of clarine. In his recipe, Beach Bumberry, now realize, Beach Bumberry's recipe books were published quite a few years ago before Clarine was readily available in the United States. Therefore, Beach Bumberry suggests using cachaça, which is also a sugarcane juice based spirit, as a substitute. Having tried a number of cachaças, and I like cachaça, I'm a big fan of Novo Fogo, um, I gotta say they are nothing alike. Nothing alike. So, I want to see how this plays in this cocktail. First of all, it calls for three quarter ounces of lime juice. So, let's see if we can get our lime here. That's one half of a lime. Here's the other half. That's half an ounce, and we can get another quarter ounce out of this. There we go, quarter ounce. Get back up. Next is Demerara syrup. So, half an ounce of Demerara syrup. Now, three quarter ounces, Benedictine. Benedictine is a spiced liqueur from Europe, made by Benedictine monks, obviously. And it's not super common, but I found that I really enjoy tiki cocktails that in include it. Got a nice, distinctive, sweet flavor. 
that brings extra dimensionality to cocktails. Barb and Core Rum, three quarter ounces. I am using Five Star, which does not mean it's been aged five years. Go figure, this is eight years. Barb and Core is a delicious rum made from sugarcane juice in Haiti, but it is not an agricole. It is not produced by the same standards as, as agricole, and therefore does not have that grassiness that one would associate with agricole. Now finally, Clarine. Now Vival will have a different flavor profile from other clarines, so you can try it with different expressions of clarine and come up with an entirely different flavored cocktail profile, which is kind of neat. And that's three quarter ounces right there. Add ice. and shake. Bring out the coupe glass, strain in there. Oh yes, I love using the cobbler shaker, how you get little tiny ice shards in daiquiris and their variants. And this is a lovely, lovely straw color. Oh, and it's got that, that buttery umami nose coming up off of it with, with the strawberries and sweet pickles. So that's interesting combination. And some of you might be saying, oh, wow, that sounds nasty, but it it's really smells good. Oh, wow. This is, <clears throat> this is an excellent daiquiri riff. Uh, the Vival is still here. It's still over present, ever present. It is dominating the cocktail, but the Barbancourt, the Lime, the Demerara, the Benedictine, all of those are not so much diluting it as as subduing it. Uh, the, the, the rough edges are softened dramatically. It's much more approachable. Oh, that is good. Um, no, there's a little spice notes. And the Vival dominates the cocktail and it's hard to pick out any one of the other ingredients but it's such a delicate balancing act that you would notice more if any one of the others were missing. If, if the Barbancourt was not there, you would notice it. If the Benedictine was not there, you'd notice it. Oh, that is excellent. I'm definitely going to be interested in trying this with other clarion expressions. No telling how radical the departure in the flavor profile it'll be. But this is a category of rum that many people are excited about and I understand why. It's probably not for everyone. Uh, if you are just looking for nice sipping rums like Appleton 12, you're going to probably bounce off of this one hard. Uh, this is certainly not going to be confused with a Dorley's or anything from Foursquare. Uh, but if you're adventurous and like to try new things and want to expand your palate, then by all means, grab a Clarin when you have a chance. A uh, lot of uh, individuals in Haiti are benefiting from this. Uh, a lot of small time distillers. And unlike uh, some of the issues they have with mezcal, sugarcane is a rapidly renewable resource, so it can be much more environmentally friendly. All right.
Until next time from the Lagoon of Mystery, cheers. Cheers.